Today we have a digital ocean setup tutorial. So in this tutorial, you'll learn how to set up CyberPanel with Lightspeed on DigitalOcean, and you can run your WordPress websites with SSL. I'll show you exactly how to do this. I'll also show you how to set up email on DigitalOcean with CyberPanel. A lot of other tutorials don't show you how to get this working properly, but I'll show you how to set up an SMTP relay and get this working. And best of all, we can do all of this for free. Check out the links in the description where you can get 60 days of credit for DigitalOcean and also Send in Blue's SMTP relay. You can get 300 emails per day free forever through Send in Blue. So check those links out in the description. You can follow along this tutorial perfectly for free. So let's get started. As we can see, I've set up a WordPress website here on my test domain, Idea Test Site, and this is running perfectly with the Cadence theme, getting 100 on mobile through that Lightspeed server. I've also got my email server set up here, running test messages through to my Gmail landing in my primary inbox. So I'll show you exactly how I did all of this step by step. So if this all sounds interesting, then keep watching. All right, once we're all signed up and logged into our DigitalOcean dashboard, what we're going to do is create a droplet. And then we choose a region, choose a region closest to your audience. I'm going to go with New York for this example here. And then scrolling down, we're going to choose our image. So we're going to click Marketplace there and just start typing CyberPanel in here. So I'll just type Cyber and you'll find CyberPanel looks like that one. So we select CyberPanel and there we go. It looks like CyberPanel on Ubuntu. And then going down, we are going to choose our size of our droplet. So this will work on a um, even the smallest one. So even a regular $6, um, one gigabyte one will do. For this example, I think I'll use a premium Intel. I was just benchmarking these today, premium Intel and premium AMD. They cost $1 extra. The Intel was slightly faster on the WordPress benchmark. I think it got a 7.5. The AMD got a 7.1. I have seen um, CPU benchmarks where the AMD is a slightly better CPU. But the Intel has a slightly better drive. So the overall web, um, and especially the database performance, is a little better on the Intel. So I'm going to use the Intel, but they are very similar in their benchmarks from what I've seen. I'm going to select the $7 one for this example. And then scrolling down, we can set up an authentication method. You can use a password or an SSH key. I'll use a password for today's example. Pop a password in there. Make it nice and long and complex if you're using a password. And then we can add some optional things on here. You can add backups, so you can add improved metrics. I'll leave those blank for this example, um, but you can feel free to add those if you like. We're going to give this a name. I'm going to call it um, the, the host name. So idea test uh, site test site is what I'm going to use today, but um, whatever you're using can go in there. And then we can go ahead and click create. After clicking create, you'll see a blue progress bar as your droplet sets up. So just be patient and wait for that to finish. And after a few seconds, you will get a complete droplet there with your public IP address. So I'm going to copy that public IP address. I'm going to point my domain over to this IP address. So in my case, I bought my domain over from Namecheap. If you've never bought a domain, I'll link to a tutorial where I show you how to set up a domain if you'd like to do that. But um, for most of us who are familiar with domains, um, I've got mine hosted on Namecheap. Idea test site is what we're using today. We are under our domain list and under advanced DNS. So we're going to add some DNS records here. So um, whatever you're using, just go to your DNS manager and add an A record for at Point it to your IP address that we got before there. And we're going to add another one on there for an A record for mail, because we're going to receive mail on here as well. We're going to point that to the same server. And another one for uh, the C name, www. And we're going to point that to idea test site. And we're going to save all those on. There we go. And now that those are all saved, we can head back to DigitalOcean and check out our droplet. So let's go ahead and click our droplet there. And we can see our details here. And if we click the actual name of our droplet there, we can get to the management screen. So um, from here, we'll just wait for this to load up and we can actually go to the console. So this will actually SSH into our console through our browser, which is very convenient. So now that this is connected, we can see um, our server details here. It's gonna actually say, do you wish to update the system now? I might make this a little bigger so we can see. There we go. We're gonna use capital Y for yes there. Um, and hit enter, and it's going to run an update on our server. So wait for this to finish. This will take a minute or two. So I'm going to come back in a second. All right, so that update took a bit under five minutes to complete. And up here, you'll notice that you can get your CyberPanel admin password with this command here. So I'm just going to copy that actually, and then paste it down here, and then press enter. 
and it will show us our admin passwords. I'm going to just copy that and pop that into Notepad and use that for later. So this part here is actually going to be our admin password that we can use to log in a little bit later. And to actually log in, we can see our server panel login is this one here. It's our IP address on port 8090. So I'm going to copy that into our browser and we can go ahead. You'll get an SSL warning the first time we do this and uh, we can just proceed through there to our server panel login page here. So the login will look like this and the username is going to be admin and the password is going to be the password that we got from the console just then. So we go ahead and sign in here. All right, so the first thing we can do is start setting up our website. So we go to websites and we're going to create a website. And first of all, we can turn test domain off. I'm going to set up a uh, domain here with the idea test site that we talked about earlier. So default package, um, admin is the owner. The domain name is idea uh, test dot site in my case, but your domain obviously goes in there, put in a email and then select our PHP. I'll go with the most recent PHP 8.1 in my case here. And we want SSL and open based protection there. And before we click create, just make sure that your domain is actually hitting your IP address. You can do this by using uh, dnschecker.org, put in your domain there, check the A um, record there and make sure that IP address lines up with your server. So that looks like it's hitting my server IP just fine. And now the website creation should work just fine. Um, you wanna make sure that's working because the SSL won't issue correctly if it's not pointed to your server. So um, let, this, let this do its thing and we'll come back in a second. All right, so we've got a success message here. If we open a new tab, we can actually see our dear test site should be working just fine. We've got an SSL padlock on here. So this looks like a good start. Um, the next thing we can do is rather than using this IP address to access cyber panel, we can actually use our domain name now. So all we have to do is go to SSL and do host name SSL there. And then we can select the website that we just set up there and we can click issue SSL. So I've got a success message there. We can access cyber panel on our domain on port 8090 now. So let's go ahead and try that. So we can head to our domain and we can put port 8090 on here. So colon 8090, and this should take us to our cyber panel login now. And there we go. We can actually log in again with the same admin password that we um, set up earlier. So let's go ahead and sign in. The next thing I'll do is I'll install WordPress on our website. So let's go to our websites again here and list our websites. We'll see our ID test site and we can click manage. We can see we've got our SSL certificate that will expire in 89 days, but that does automatically renew. So don't worry about that one. Um, rewrite rules, we might actually do this while we're here. And we can do a SSL rewrite. So force HTTP to HTTPS, that's worth selecting. Save that on there. And then also, oh, that looks all good. Scrolling down, we can see we've got our application installer. So there's a few choices here. I'll use WordPress. For this example, this is WordPress with Lightspeed cache. We can just fill this in. So that is your blog title, your username and nice strong password there, admin email path, leave the path blank to install it onto your home directory and go ahead and click install. And this is gonna go ahead and install WordPress. And we've got our install is successful. If we head over to our test site, we can see we've got a blank WordPress site on here. If I head to the admin login, so dash WP dash, oh, WP admin there, um, WP dash admin. We can actually log in with the credentials that we just set up. So that was, my login was ideas spot and the password goes in there. Now we can go ahead and log in. I can update that password or save your password as you like. And this is WordPress, that's good to go. We've got Lightspeed cache automatically installed as well. And from here, you can go to appearance and themes, install your favorite theme and start building. For example, I was using cadence theme for the testing. So I'll link to that in the description. Also, you can go to plugins, um, add a migration plugin, like all in one migration and bring your existing WordPress website into your new server. I'll link to a tutorial for that as well in the description. The next thing we can do is back in cyber panel, we can start setting up email now. So under SSL, let's start with our mail server SSL. And so we want to select our website again here and we're going to issue SSL for the mail server. And we've got our success message here. The next thing we can do is under email, we're going to create an email and we select our website here and we're going to select our username. So I'm going to be Alex for my email and we can put in a nice password as well and then click create. That looks all good. 
Now we can see details about our email under email. And if we list our emails here, we can select our domain again. And the first time you do this, you would normally get this um, red error message here, but you can automatically fix that by clicking fix now. Um, this is very common. So just wait for that to auto correct. So it takes about a minute and you'll get a success message. So this looks all good. So one issue with DigitalOcean is that it actually blocks port 25. So to get around that, when you've set up your new account, I'll show you how to use an SMTP relay rather than trying to use the DigitalOcean server. So for this, I'm going to use Send in Blue. I'll put a link in the description where you can get your free Send in Blue account. So go ahead and check that link out. Uh, the other free option is mailjet.com. I've got a link to that as well, but Send in Blue will give you 300 emails per day. Um, this one will give you 200 on the free plan. So um, I slightly prefer Send in Blue. Um, once you've logged into your Send in Blue account, you can head over to your um, SMTP and API. That'll take you to this screen. You want to be under your SMTP tab. And we're going to set up an SMTP uh, key for our server. So we basically click generate a new SMTP key. I'm going to name this one um, cyber test and generate that key. Now this will take a second and we want to click that copy button. That'll copy it to our clipboard. Now make sure we keep this safe. I'm going to paste it into notepad here. We're going to use this a bit later. So make sure you don't lose this. Once you close this, you won't get another chance to get an access to that uh, key again. So make sure you copy it and keep it safe. And so that's going to be our password and our server port and login are going to be uh, detailed there. So make sure you're aware of those. Then we head back to our DigitalOcean uh, console. So go ahead and load up your console again. I've actually still got my console open so I can go back to that window. And here we're going to edit our email postfix config. So the command we're going to use is nano, uh, our main config there for postfix. So I'll put all these commands over on my blog so you can just paste these in. But once we hit enter, it'll load up our postfig uh, main config. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom. I'm using the arrow key to press down here to scroll right down to the bottom. And then we're gonna paste in some more details here. So, so this is the stuff I'm gonna paste in. Now I'm gonna put this all in my blog. That link is in the description, but basically you just have to edit this. Um, I've got my login here. So your login is your email and your uh, password is gonna be that key that we created in Send in Blue. So that's got a colon between it and it'll say static colon, your login email and then your um, Send in Blue key there. So I'm gonna copy all of that here, copy it. And then in here, I'm gonna paste that in there. And then we can press uh, Control X to exit and Y for yes and then enter. And that looks all good. And then we restart postfix post with this command here. So I'm going to paste that command in there again. And that will restart our postfix email server. So that looks all good. All of our email is going to be routed through that send in blue server. And that gets around that issue with uh, DigitalOcean blocking port 25. We can use send in blue rather than DigitalOcean for sending out those emails. The next step is back in send in blue. We're going to head to our senders and IP. We're going to set up our domain in Send in Blue here. So click on domain. What we're gonna do is verify our domain through Send in Blue here. So in my case, I'm using ideatest.site. There we go, let's save one in. And we're gonna to need to put these DNS records into our domain. So I'm gonna copy this value here. This is a text record. So back in our DNS manager on Namecheap, we can actually add records in. So I'm gonna add that text record here. Um, this one was at the root, so we put at, the root, paste that value in and click save. So that one looks all good. The next one is uh, mail dot underscore domain key. Is that one here? We're gonna add that one in. That is also a text record. And that value is all this stuff here. We can just click copy and paste that in there. Again, we click the tick. This looks all good. And once those records are in, we can go back to send in blue here. We can click verify and authenticate. So we've got a success message there. That looks all good. The other DNS record worth adding is a um, DMARC record as well. So we can actually add another text record here. That's going to be underscore DMARC. And then the value. And I'll put for the value, I'll put V equals DMARC1, P equals none. Um, again, this will all be on my blog. You can paste that in, but that's just a blank record that can actually 
improve our sender reputation by having a DMARC record as well. So I'll pop that in as well. And we do want to put an MX record. So depending on your um, DNS manager, you may be able to add an MX record, but on Namecheap, you do it through mail setting here. We want to do a uh, custom MX for our mail setting. So the host is just going to be at, and the mail server is going to be mail, mail.id test site in my case, but your domain will go there. Priority can be 10 and TTL can be automatic. We can save that in. So that should be everything we need for our emails to work. Let's head back to cyber panel here and under email, we can access our webmail. It's just a case of setting up the uh, login with your email that you set up earlier. I'd set up um, Alex at idea test site with the password that we set up and we'll click remember me sign in. This should log us in. This looks all good. Let's set up a new message and do a test. So I'm just gonna send a quick message over to Gmail. Go ahead and send that through. And after a few seconds, that should land in our inbox here. There we go. Um, let's open that up. That's landed okay in my inbox. And I'll have a look at the show original here. And we can just see if we're passing our SPF, DKM and DMARC. So that looks all good. If you are having trouble with your emails not landing in the primary inbox, if they're going to promotions or updates or something, just check out my other video about improving your sender reputation because there's a few tips in that video, but this looks like it's working just fine. The other nice thing about this SMTP setup is that your WordPress transactional email should work as well through Send in Blue as well. So if we go to, let's for example, lost our password and um, let's put in our email address there, get a new password, we can actually see that our WordPress emails should pop up as well, they're coming through just fine. Uh, if we have a look, uh, again, these are all passing as well. So, uh, so your WooCommerce emails and your um, uh, subscriber emails will go through just fine as well with this setup um, using that SMTP relay. Finally, back in Cyber Panel, there's a few more settings to be aware of uh, before I finish up here. So, PHP, your PHP config is available through the menu there and you can select the version that you're using. And by default, the upload max file size is quite small. So if you're transferring over like a big migration and you need to upload a big file, you might wanna make that a bit bigger. Um, same with the memory limit, you might make that 256. Post max size, you can make that bigger as well, but tweak those to your own preferences and save that. And just, just be aware of where that sits. You'll get a success message there. And the other um, things you can turn on is a few extra security features you can turn on under security. So you've got uh, your mod security conf there. And by default, it's not installed. So you can go ahead and install that. Just wait for that to set up. You've got a success message there. Also, we go to, uh, it'll reload. And then we can go down to mod security rules. You've got those by default, but under mod security rules packs, we should be able to add a um, OWASP core rules pack there. Turn that on and wait for that one. All good. And then the other thing we've got is uh, CSF. Again, that's not installed by default, but we can install that and just wait again. And that did take a couple of minutes, but we've got a success message there too. It'll refresh and now we've got our CSF. And finally, you may also want to connect your server to Super Panel Cloud that gives you a safe way of doing server updates as well. So check that out. I actually did that in a previous video. I'll link to that on the end screen here, but that basically covers all the steps you need to get your um, websites running through WordPress and your email sending properly through Send in Blue. So um, give us a like if that was helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.